Hi, my name is Rebecca Bell and I'm here on the Joinees Resolution sailing as a core log seismic integration specialist. So drilling is really the only way we have of truly knowing what's going on in the earth beneath our feet and what's going on under the sea floor. Drilling and getting core allows us to physically hold the geology in our hand so we actually know what's going on. But drilling only tells us about what's going on in a hole several inches in diameter. And geology is really spatially varying, so it's not that useful to learn about what's happening away from the drill hole over distances of kilometres. Fortunately, though, we do have another tool called seismic reflection imaging, which allows us to see how the rock layers vary away from the drill sites. So seismic reflection imaging is a little bit like giving the Earth a CAT scan or an X-ray. But it doesn't use X-rays, it uses sound waves. So we produce a sound wave which travels through the water column and into the rock. And where the sound waves reach rocks with different properties, we get a reflection, we get an echo. We can start to build up an image of all of those echoes to know about what the rock layers look like. This is a real seismic reflection section from the Hikarangi margin, where we're drilling in Expedition 375. And the red and the blue lines that you can see here are echoes coming back from different rock layers in the earth. When the echoes are really bright, it tells us we've got big changes in the rock properties. And when they're rather muted and low, it tells us that things aren't really varying. The reflections, the echoes that come from um, deeper come at later times. So we see them further down the seismic section. So these seismic sections are great, but they're actually telling us about the time it takes these reflections to come back. So although this looks like a cross section, the y-axis is in time, not meters. Our cores, of course, are in meters, so we have to marry those two things together, the cores that are measured in depth and the seismic which is measured in time. So that's really my job here on the ship. So as well as collecting core, we also collect another type of data called logging data, which involves moving an instrument up and down the hole to measure the velocity and the density of the rocks. And this is some, these are some real velocity and density logs from Expedition 375. So whether or not we get a reflection depends on the velocity and density differences. It depends on something called acoustic impedance, and that's the product of these two things multiplied together. So what we have to do is make a fake seismic trace at our drill site to try and match together the core data with the seismic data. So we take these velocity and density logs, multiply them together to get this parameter called the acoustic impedance, and we get reflections where that changes. So from that, we can get this thing here, which is called a reflection coefficient log, and these spikes sticking out to the right and left tell us where we're going to get reflections. We take a little sound pulse, like you can see down there at the bottom of the diagram, and we send that sound pulse on our computers through this reflection coefficient log, and we develop a fake seismic trace. We then compare that seismic trace to the real data. This one's actually worked out quite well. The synthetic trace, which is in the middle, looks quite like the real data, which is on the left and the right. This was taken over an area where we're expecting to find the Hikarangi uh, subduction front or thrust fault, and from the core data, we know that that occurs around about here. We see really bright reflections here, both in our synthetic and our real data, and that then allows us to map where the fault is from the core into the seismic data, and then we can trace that reflection out over our seismic profiles many tens of kilometers long. So in that way, we can really kind of link together the core log and the seismic data, and that provides us with our best possible way of getting at what's going on in the earth beneath the seafloor.